this is Corey from Trivium, and you're watching United Rock Nations. Well, now that it's been out for a while, you can get a better idea of, you know, it's, it's really, it's been, been really great. You know, it's, uh, especially in America, it's reached a lot of new fans, and, it, and um, you know, it's been our biggest, you know, we've had our biggest hit at radio we've ever had in our career. Um, so it's really opened the doors for a lot of, lot of things in, uh, in our home, home country. And, uh, you know, the songs seem to be, you know, the songs we play live seem to have a great, great vibe with the crowd. Everyone's singing along. So I think it's, it's done really well, and uh, I think it's easier to gauge kind of like the response of a record, you know, once it's been out for a little while. Uh, just because when you first put out something new, people are, you know, it's just, they react so fast with if they like it or not, because, like if it's different than what they were expecting or whatnot. So you kind of give it a little time where people can really just kind of take the time to digest the music and understand what the record's all about and appreciate it for what it is and, and, uh, and what it's not, you know. So uh, it's, it's been going great, you know, it's really kind of still, still selling really well and, uh, you know, it's definitely uh, some of those songs like Until the World Goes Cold has some, one of the biggest sing-alongs of our set. So um, every record we, you know, just kind of naturally just do something different than what we did before. Try to do something that would be interesting for us as musicians and songwriters and also something where the fans get, you know, they don't get the same album every, every time. And, you know, creatively, it's fun to try new things and uh, write some different kinds of songs and not just, you know, write eight million pull harder, you know, songs or something. So, um, yeah, every record, we just kind of naturally just find a way to take all the ingredients that make up our sound and, uh, and kind of present them in a different way and focus on some different elements that, you know, we didn't on one record. So I'm sure the next record we'll, we'll find, you know, something different to uh, progress into the next sound. demos and song ideas you know probably a lot more than you know what we could do for a record but uh you know we have a lot of a lot of stuff demos of song ideas but uh you know once we get down to you know uh i guess thinking about what we want to do for the next record we'll kind of go through all the ideas and kind of find the stuff that's kind of on point with kind of what's in our head of what we feel like we want to do for the record so you know we just we always just stockpile as many ideas as possible and you know, some stuff we'll use, and then some stuff just kind of, we'll just if they're cool ideas, we kind of keep them on the in the demo pile, and you know, some stuff will kind of, you know, we write for a record, and then we don't use it, but then you know, maybe the next record it kind of fits more of the vibe of of what we're doing in you know a year or two. So uh, you know, Silence in the Snow has been, you know, that song was written like seven years ago, so uh, it just kind of naturally felt like this was a good time for where we're at in our creative, I guess, journey. It just seemed like a song that really fit with what we wanted to do now and didn't really fit with, you know, the Shogun record, obviously, if you compare the two, it's a different vibe. <laughs> Uh, I think it's just kind of like with music, our musical kind of progression, it's uh, we just kind of, when we got an idea of what the music is going to be, we kind of think of who would be a good fit to work with us on this record. And, and it's great because every producer we work with, we kind of learn new tricks and new ways of approaching, you know, recording in the studio. And, uh, and it's just, I think, you know, we just kind of felt like it's just every time we do a record it kind of just feels nice to get in with someone someone different kind of keeps the recording I guess process uh, fresh and exciting and um, and just kind of uh, you know it's just kind of just what we do and um, take the opportunities you know to work with some talented people when the opportunity is available to us so you know we already have ideas for uh, you know the next record you know we're gonna be you know, we got another guy in mind that that we want to work with um, so uh, yeah it's just kind of you know we just like to mix it up and you know keep keep everyone on their toes well, we, we 
started using seven strings on the Crusade album, and the Crusade and Shogun have seven strings. Shogun's predominantly seven. And then we went away from it for a couple records, and then once we decided to you know, use Silence in the Snow again, that's a seven string song. So we're like, yeah, let's bring it back, because um, the last two records were all six string. Um, they just kind of felt like, you know, sonically, you know, set the record apart from the last couple. Um, having the seven strings and having it that different tone that, uh, that you get. We, we introduced a new tuning on the record, which is another seven string tuning, which is different. So uh, it's just, you know, you kind of write different kinds of parts and songs when you change the, what kind of guitar you're playing. So uh, it definitely opened it up to give each song like a different dynamic. Um, and, and we really like playing the seven strings a lot. So uh, just felt like, you know, after taking a break for a while, it was something we just kind of kind of naturally just kind of wanted to do. Um, so yeah, we used a couple different tunings. And then, um, and then Jackson, you know, I started playing Jackson at the beginning of our career and then uh, switched to Dean for a couple years. And then uh, when that kind of uh, wasn't working out and uh, kind of looked at a couple different brands to see what, you know, what was out there and uh, kind of see what I liked. But Jackson was always my, you know, kind of first go-to brand. I always just loved the Jackson V's, you know, being a big Megadeth fan, I'd always see the Mustaine Jackson V's from back in the day that always struck me as a really badass guitar. So um, when I had the opportunity, I talked to Jackson back, in, it's been quite a while now, like almost eight years ago. Um, you know, the couple people that were working there, um, I had known from other companies and I was like, oh, you're, you're working there now, this rules. Um, so once I had the opportunity and I knew the situation was going to be a good one, um, you know, I jumped at the opportunity to, you know, play my favorite brand again. So I've been with them almost since like 2000, maybe, well, officially probably since 2009, but I started playing my old Jacksons in like some point 2000, I think it was beginning of 2009. So uh, yeah, it's been a... Uh, Know, seven, eight years or something like that, or whatever it is. Um, so yeah, I'm happy. I got my own signature series with them. Um, that is, you know, fantastic. The you know the people that make the guitars at Jackson are just phenomenal. So uh, definitely uh, continuing the uh, the tradition of being my favorite guitar brand. <laughs>